Welcome back to another one take. This time we're taking a look at the Venezia. Of course, this video series is all about live games and no pre-recorded anything, so I'm hopping into this one totally blind. But I do know this ship, and this ship is very, very good. I think this is one of the best cruisers at tier 10. The sap just hits so hard, and honestly, it really pushed the Zhao out uh, when the ship came out. Realistically, Zhao was there as an accurate Alpha Strike HE ship, I think, and Venice just does it better. The ship, the ship is just amazing. And on top of that, you get yourself an exhaust smoke. So if you get into trouble, you can click your smokes and you just run away. It's such a difficult ship to kill because it has pretty good armor as well. And yeah, look at that HP pool. Unlike a Zhao, it actually gets a little bit of HP. <laughs> of course, long reload, right? So 18 and a half seconds with the current build that I have. It's one where even with this range, I think you could run range mod. Like it's not something that you're going for DPM out of. I think it's a ship you're really looking for those big meaty alpha strikes. So we'll see if we can hit this summers. It's really, really valuable to get that damage in on DDs. Yeah, there goes 5k. <laughs> it's just, it's just, Oh my goodness, it's so fun. It's so fun. If you're someone who enjoys alpha damage over DPM, like me, I tend to play battleships, partially for that reason, because I like the alpha damage. Um, this is a fun cruiser. It's a very fun cruiser. We do have to watch out. I mean, there's a Kremlin here, potentially, right? I'm gonna torp there, just as torping in the gap, trying to hit something, maybe. The torps are okay, but, you know, nothing to write home about. They reload reasonably quick, I guess, which is something positive about them. It's really it's really a ship that has battle impact through this alpha damage onto DDs. So that's where I'm trying to get into positions where I can do good damage on DDs and support my own friendly DDs. Um, eight kilometer plane spotting, so I'm turning out right away. I don't want to get myself smashed by a Kremlin or something like that, right? So we gotta be a little bit careful. But Kremlin's coming in, we can get ourselves a decent hit onto his superstructure, right? The sap does pen 54 millimeters, so you're aiming for upper belts, you're aiming for superstructures, that kind of thing. And 13k. Battleship salvo, right? <laughs> it's it hurts, man. This this ship hurts. It's one of the more frustrating ships to fight against for me, because it just so consistently deals damage. Of course, we have Sansonetti as well. The Italian ships all really want Sansonetti. There you can see some of the issues with being on an angled ship, right? It's not going to do the best damage into angled ships, but it's still really good damage, right? It's still really good damage. And if he opens up like that, that's that should be more than enough. I'm trying to hit him in the upper belt right here. I'm trying to, you know, plant some shells and yeah, 6k. Take 6k all, all day. We're up to 27k, just starting. And the important thing here is, it's two Massachusetts versus two Massachusetts, right? We're providing DPM support to hopefully get our Massachusetts to win this engagement, because it can get a little bit sketchy in these early engagements here. If you lose one, two battleships instantly, suddenly you lose this whole flank, and then, you know, what on earth is going on at sea? I was about to... You guys know at this point, if you've watched for a while, this map, I always talk about this. Stalemate at sea. Whoever wins the 1-2-3 line is the one who gets the flanking shots and probably wins the game. Like, I've said this a million times. What on earth is happening? Where's the stalemate? How can, I how can I possibly make my YouTube point if they're not doing it? <laughs> uh, Kremlin's not looking at us. I would have popped my smoke if he was. Um, just because it's a little spooky. Somehow we shot down planes. It's a Lexington, so I suppose low tier is the reason for that. Um, the A is nothing to write home about, right? It's it's 4.6 kilometer A range, which is really bad. Like there's nothing else I can say other than that. that's just horrible. I don't even know how that's possible at tier 10, but it is. Italian ships don't have AA. Look at that, eight and a half thousand into a saturated Kremlin superstructure. Pretty good. It's pretty good damage. Um, this one, yeah, I don't know, I don't know what's going on this one. It's looking like as soon as this Kremlin goes down, this flank falls for the enemy team and it's just kind of over then, right? 
11 hits out of 15. Remember, we have 15 shells. Interesting. The DD appears to be on our right. I love the Venancia, man. This this ship is so good. I, I thought it was too strong when it came into the game. It had some nerfs um, previously, if you didn't know. <laughs> if you didn't play this ship at the beginning, this ship at, I think, 16 or 17 kilometers would actually be able to full pen deck armor. So the auto bounce or the bouncing angles of sap were so extreme that the shells plunging at like 16, 17 kilometers, they would plunge down and the deck armor on ships wouldn't be enough to bounce it. It's crazy. It was insane. It was insane the damage you were doing. So yeah, good nerf to reduce that. It means you do want to get flanking shots, but even into a, you know, a Massachusetts at that angle, what is that, 20, 28 degrees? Yeah. And we have 30 millimeters of armor, so we don't really care about his AP. You know, there's some secondaries that'll come in, but even that we don't really care too much about. And because we're slow, we have a slow fire rate, we have this really, oh my goodness, 13k. We have this amazing ability to say, look at our angle right now. And then as soon as we shoot, we swing out, we get our guns on target, we shoot. And then we angle back in right away. We, and we're always angled, too. That was a poor shot, by the way. Um, I should have known he was slowing down. Um, but that's that's something that keeps this ship tankier as well than something, you know, that, that could be seen as tank... That, you know, I guess the Nevsky, right? Nevsky's got some 30mm armor. It's got lots of HP, too, just like this thing does. You know, it's, it's something that... Uh, it's a tier 10 cruiser that has DPM, though, where... You can't just angle all the time, right? So that's kind of where some of these slower firing ships, I don't know if they're better, but they can certainly have an advantage. And oh my goodness, we're on a double fire. So what do we do? We have this wonderful thing called a fuel smoke. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, one of those, it's one of those things where Italian ships, yes, especially the battleships and DDs are significantly limited on range. Um, I think the cruisers are probably the best of the Italian ships, prob most likely, just considering how flexible they are. Um, I really do think that... Sorry, I, I had to concentrate on dodging there for a second, because we don't want to eat Kitakaze Torps. Um, the, the Italian cruisers are just amazing, and this smoke is so fun to use. He's going to eat a Torp. Um, there you also saw one of the interesting things about the... Venezia, this this turning um, turn time, I guess the rudder shift is really slow, but the turning radius is really tight on this ship. So it's it's something that seems like it shouldn't be that maneuverable, but it actually is, um, especially if you're paying a little bit of attention. Right, the the slow rudder shift means you're not going to be switching directions terribly quickly, but you can turn quick. Um, you just can't react slowly, I, or you, you have to react quickly to whatever's coming up in front of you, I guess I should say. Of course, you know, a Venice running with destroyers is always going to be a nightmare for other DDs, because the sap is just... It's so, like, it's so not fun to fight against a Venezia. Anytime I'm in a DD and I see a Venezia, I run the other way, just because it's so insane. And we only did 94k this game. I mean, that's not great. I, but it like they just melted right this was just an insanely quick game um but man i love this i love this ship i really think this has got to be one of the cruisers to get um just is only a low a low damage dealer it's it's a uh, it does a lot um if i can quickly find my venice uh, 161k average on 61 games 70 percent win rate and that's not a radar cruiser and as you guys know, I mostly play solo um, for a long time now. So it's, it's even without a radar, it has huge battle impact. And that really comes from its amazing ability to impact DD fights, even at reasonable ranges. The shell velocity is there. Um, as far as the upgrades, I have main battery uh, reload here, but you can definitely run range if you're not feeling comfortable. Obviously... The current year of World of Warships, this is 2022, but I'm sure it's not going to change in 2023 if somebody's watching this in 2023. Um, it's a passive meta at tier 10, so you can don't feel bad about going range mod. I think the days of, oh, you should run reload, you're giving up so much, I don't think those days are here anymore. Those are long gone.
I am running spotter aircraft mod one and combined with the eye in the sky upgrade, it's a really powerful spotter plane that is at least available to you more often than it isn't. So you can get away with a reload build here. I think with that, I, I found pretty good value out of that in those more passive games, even running reload. But I'll run the second game with range just to show you that it it's totally fine. This is an alpha damage ship, not a uh, not a DPM one. So you want to get good flanks. You want to get the right shot. Um, I'm running steering gears here. You notice how uh, even with that, it's a pretty sluggish rudder. So you definitely want to run steering gears even over prop mod. You might say run steering gears mod too have an insanely fast rudder shift time and a good turning circle, and it's basically impossible to hit this thing. Uh, I know from experience as the battleship player trying to hit this thing, uh, but I think in random battles, most people aren't really gonna be able to hit you anyway all that well. That can work more in niche situations like clan battles, cots, that kind of thing. I, I like concealment a lot for that ability to sneak up closer and impact those DD engagements. Um, and that's why I'm not running heavy sap either. The 10% alpha is hilarious, and I, you can run it. It's pretty fun. But again, it's it's that reduction to concealment. It's like a 14 con kilometer concealment when you run this. So, you know, it works. It works. It's not bad. Um, oh, I haven't played this ship since the economic change. So let's move things back over. That looks fine. Remember, don't, don't run ship XP on a tier 10. You don't need the XP. Um, Everything's separated now. It's really cool. I uh, I love this ship, man. I really do. So let me just make sure we're on range. And let's head into the next one. I I really think that you got to grind this ship. I think some of the line can be a little mediocre. Um, mainly because they just don't have that alpha yet. The shells do. The shells do a ton of damage. But you don't have the number of barrels, right? Like, that's the nice thing about Venice over a lot of the other tier 10 cruisers. You have 15 guns. What other tier 10s have 15 guns? Um, you know, incoming uh, Japanese light cruisers, right? But but real, really, oh my goodness, wow. Incredible map rotation here. We're getting a ton of variety. Thank you, game. I really wanted to show the exact same map twice. <laughs> and yes, it's a different one, and we're on a different spawn. It's the same map, guys. It's the same map. Um, it's... What was I saying? You should get Venice. If you don't have Venice, you should get it. Um, I have Sansonetti here. Of course, that's going to be a huge benefit. I get a kill. It's range. I get um, 100 hits. I think I get consumables, right? Something like that. Um, there's there's a reload upgrade as well. Confederate gives me a faster reload as well on Sansonetti. It's really, really powerful, Sansonetti. So, you know, even without Sansonetti, this ship's really good, though. Um, I think the DDs and battleships struggle more without Sansonetti. I think, to me, the Italian cruisers were designed to be good outside of Sansonetti. And then, because Sansonetti was in the game, it's like they designed the battleships around you just using Sansonetti. And same with the DDs, even more so, I would say. That lack of range is ridiculous. Um, but here... With range mod, we at least have access to range mod. 20 kilometers of range is very comfy. And of course we have a spotter as well. Spotter's pretty useless though with range mod I find. So that's why I tend to like reload personally. If I had to pick one over the other, I, I like reload. Uh, I think it's more interesting. And with this fuel smoke, you can play aggressive and stay within that closer uh, gun range, right? Of 17 kilometers and be okay because you can just get use your get out of jail free card you get three, three get out of jail free cards, right? If you're playing Monopoly or whatever. Pretty good. And I'm not shooting here. I'm not shooting here. If I get spotted, I'll shoot. But I'm not shooting here because our Fletcher might spot a DD. And I'm very particular about my positioning here. I'm thinking the enemy DD is behind this island here. So I'm trying to be sneaky and surprise him. <laughs> the Des Moines is an attempting shot too, obviously. Um, looks like, looks like he's not going to spot much, so. Oh, there's the Sherman. But the Sherman's going behind the island. Too bad. We'll start with that one. So, you know, it, it was okay to wait there, I think. Um, our Kitakazi's getting blown out. Um, I should really go help with that. 
That's where I need to go, is I need to go help there. I hope he can live just a little bit. Georgia with the overmatch could hurt. Could definitely hurt. And we barely dodged that one. And yeah, we're gonna get our turn out in here. Um with that with some of those um heavy sap, for example, I'd be spotted here. So, you know, I'd basically I'd use my smoke. It's not like it's an un playable position, right? This smoke is just so much value, right? It's so good. But uh, it's nice to not have the use the smoke right now. I can use it for something else. I'm worried about giving broadside to the Des Moines, but I'm okay. Relatively okay where I'm at. Try and get that salvo into the Brindisi. There's no battleship down here, so that's why I'm okay with giving pretty solid broadside out there. We only one pen somehow. Uh, I don't know how that happened, but only one pen. That's unfortunate. And we'll do this one. Hi, smiley face. Okay, he died. Um, all right. Well, let's let's go here and try and at least help our Kitakazi. I think he'll go down more than likely, but if we can get some decent hits into that Yugamo before, I think that'll be very good. George is, you know, not looking too healthy, so we'll try and help out there. We're taking some pain from the Des Moines. I don't really want to eat a Georgia Salvo. Although I'm lit, um, so that means the Yugamo is pretty close. So our, our smoke fire here, I haven't talked about this really yet, um, is what, 11, hold on, 11 point, 12 point, one, 12 point one. So that's something to keep in mind, right, is 12 point one kilometers. If you shoot within your smoke, you're going to be detected. If you shoot and then try and smoke up like I did, you're going to be detected. Um, it's an interesting way to gain information. It tells me the Kitakazi is pretty close. So there's the Des Moines, he's turned away. Yeah, we'll shoot again. So that time it was, you know, it wouldn't necessarily mean the Yugamo is in range because the Des Moines in range. But earlier the Des Moines was behind the island. So, you know, it's little things like this can get you a lot of information as, uh, as the game goes on. It's a good way to, you know, just constantly be learning where enemies are positioned, right? I'm worried about Torps because he's probably over here somewhere. So I'm going to actually turn around here soon. Des Moines angled pretty well, so we're not actually going to get a ton of damage here. No Hydro, of course, so it is a little difficult to... Uh, yeah, okay. Good thing we started moving when we did. Um, can I dodge this? Yep. We sure can. Um, that was purely... Purely luck with the bit of intuition mixed in. Um, it sucks our Kitakazi ate so much damage going into this battle. It sucks so much. I think the Yugumo is smoke, if I remember right. The Yugumo is a smoke Yugumo, so... Um, we're, we're reasonably okay now, so it's not like he can pop a torpedo reload booster is what I'm saying. Um, and we're, we're doing alright. Like, our team is actually holding D. We have... We have C under control, um, and, you know, this Georgia can't push here, right? They, he just can't. That looks like a Yugum. Uh, yeah, that's Yugum of Smoke. Oh, my goodness. Look at the damage output, man. It's insane. The damage output is actually crazy. Can we get over this still? No, we cannot. So, we'll shoot the Sherman at range. He looks kind of slow. And we'll maybe, I don't know what push this, but we'll try and get an angle so that this George, this Georgia probably dies to our team in the middle, actually. He's under a lot of pressure. Submarine. Always want to shoot those when you can. Looks like he's diving, though. Unfortunate. I'm actually not going to push this. Reconsidering. And a Sherman is taking a long-range gunfight with us. I don't think that is advisable, my friend. 
3k only. Too bad. Des Moines at these ranges, I don't feel too scared of, honestly. Um, I like my angle here pretty, pretty good, actually, now. Pretty happy with where I'm at, so... I think we're gonna chill. Um, let's let's pop our spotter to just give us view, right? Just not. I don't need it for the range here. I just want to get a good, accurate salvo into this GK. This this guy should die for this. He's on 90k HP, but it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Eight, yeah. So the 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 damage output is just awesome. It's awesome out of a Venezia. It's so good. I've been calling it a Venice, but it's a Venezia. My pronunciation is probably horrible, as usual. Good old. I'm from I'm from like the middle of nowhere, Saskatchewan, all right? So, in Canada, that's that's a province in Canada, with like a million people. So, <laughs> a bit of a hick country, I guess. Although that has a bit of a negative connotation now, doesn't it? I don't know. I don't know anything. I'm just a dude who plays games on the internet, all right? Don't read too much into this. It's, uh, yeah. I'm not even gonna say what time it is. It's a, it's a, it's an interesting time. I should be, I should be doing something else than making a video at this time, but I may have procrastinated today. Uh, GK is gonna go down. Look at that, 6K? Back to the ship, back to the game, instead of, you know, rambling about random stuff. I don't know how that Yukimo got spotted, by the way. Um, but yeah, push in, you die. As a GK, definitely, definitely, definitely. So I'm just trying to hold this flank, right? I know that I can't deal with a Yugumo myself. I can't. I just can't. But what I can do is prevent him from getting this cap. It's pretty unfortunate that the Aegir has run away so hard. This game's not won, by the way. We've basically lost all our DDs. Our Holland is on an adventure, you know, which is interesting. So yeah, we don't have much spotting. Uh, you just gotta be patient, right? That's the key here. In 46 seconds, we'll have another plane, so we'll be able to shoot the turpits, which will be cool. I'm so scared of the torps, man. Like, he could have either gone up here, or he could have doubled back and... So I could be getting torped from over here or back here somewhere, depending on how he plays it. So I'm a little scared. Those torps hurt. So I'm just going to slowly creep forward. Unfortunately for us, our lion is pushing and uh, so is our GK. Um, so yeah, we're, we're losing now because our team decided to push. <laughs> It's sad, but that is the meta, right? That is the way this game is these days. I'm gonna say because I haven't seen Torps, he's back here. All right, Th that's just my intuition. Okay, he's if he were here, I'm broadside. He would have torped me. He's got to be back here. Otherwise, like why else wouldn't he be torping me, right? That's the idea. So I'm, I'm okay with giving up a bit of ground now because I want to focus on whatever my team spots. Big hit into the Sherman would be huge here. 14 kilometers, it's a bit of a shot. But uh, 15 accurate shells? Yeah, I mean, that's 6.5k into a DD at that range. It's impactful. That damage is very impactful damage. Z44, I'd rather kill a DD than do a little bit of damage to one. If possible. Unfortunate, I missed. Oh, our torps aren't available. I would have torped here, actually. Because the torps aren't too quick, so maybe I catch the Des Moines on a timing here. The reason I don't really want to sit here anymore, you know, if the Yugumo's back here torping me, um is the Des Moines could be on my broadside, right? So if I decide to angle to the Des Moines, right? So I angle this way, and my ship suddenly goes this way, well then the Kitakaze gets torps, or Yugumo gets torps on me, right? For free. If I were paying attention, I could have helped kill this DD. But we'll see if that shot's any good. Kind of a rushed one. It did get over. Ah, uh, a little high, too bad. I have my smoke available too, so that's why I'm a little bit okay with 
kind of showing too much broadside here. Um, because I just have a smoke and I can just get away. I'm going to use my spotter so then I can shoot this Des Moines. And the nice thing about this is, yeah, so, it, you know, there you go. Interesting. Yugumo's gone. Yugumo's not even here. Oh, interesting. So, oh, look at that. Consumable extended time. Um, so, I know the Yugumo's not here because I'm not spotted when I shot in my smoke. Oh, very interesting. Okay. Or he's, like, way off in Narnia up here in, in like, A1, which, you know, is also a good thing to know because it's not being useful for his team. Uh, I think my team should have that Des Moines. So I'm not going to waste a shot there. I'm going to hold. Because this Des Moines is probably pushing. Right? And a Des Moines is kind of scary. But we can deal. We can deal. You know, this Amagi's got some HP still. It's good. Our team is pushing into all over there. So we can afford to give up this flank a little bit. Right? We can get spotted. That's fine. It looks like the Sherman's playing with the Des Moines to smoke him up all the time. Yeah, so we're going to just turn out, you know. Des Moines not going to really be able to do much to us in this situation. And our team pushing. We're going to try and help focus on the guys our team is focusing on. Focus fire is huge in this video game. Um, I, I know that's probably pretty basic, but maybe some of you are newer to the game. Focusing on the same target is way more valuable than everyone shooting a different target. So look at how much fire is going in on this Roma. I mean, it... He's the only guy spotted, so he's really the only guy you can shoot at. <laughs> Which also helps things. But um, even if this Des Moines were spotted, I might not shoot him. I might choose to go after this Roma, right? Because the Des Moines doing a bit of chip damage to me isn't going to win him the game. What's going to win us the game, our team the game, is killing this Roma, right? Like, like killing off targets that are preventing us from pushing. Also, notice how we're dodging at 13.5 kilometers from a Des Moines. And I know Des Moines doesn't have the best shell velocity, but it just goes to show how maneuverable this ship is and how relatively difficult it is to hit. The other thing that we should be keep in mind is Yugumo's not here guaranteed because he would have capped already, right? We're way outside of holding that cap from a Yugumo. So I think, I think it's safe to turn in. It's been safe to turn in for quite some time. That is actually either the Z44 or the Yugumo. The Yugumo might be back, guys. <laughs> Just as I... I might have spoken too soon. Um, we'll see. Also, this turn might be my death. We'll see. Um, because I know Torps are coming at some point, and I'm broadside to a Des Moines. And my escape route is turning north. So, we'll see. I like the idea of getting multiple angles on targets, though. We'll try that for the Z. It's a long shot, but maybe he runs in a straight line, right? Like, you always got to consider that he's going to stay angled to the guys chasing him, right? And we actually do manage to pick him up. But someone who's running from five ships is going to stay angled to those five ships, right? Okay, so here's the, here's the Citadels coming in. Totally fine. I'm going to blind shot there. And I'm going to turn this way. Because he doesn't have an angle. Right? Like he, he literally just doesn't have an angle on me here. And for whatever reason, I'm not getting torped. So I'm just either getting lucky or I don't know what's going on. I'll pop a plane, maybe spot something. Um, at this point, I don't need the range, so I may as well try and use it for information. They got the Sherman. I haven't done a lot of damage this game, but this game was a weird one, right? Like, nobody pushed my flank, right? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm doing chip shots, right? So it's not like... Uh, it's not like the most amazing game, but the damage comes. I promise. The damage comes. Uh, can I get over this? Not quite. We'll try and reverse in and get a shot in, actually. Should maybe get the Yukimo. Nope. Not spotted. I think I can actually hit that. 
Let's see. Give it a go. It all gets over. That's a pretty sharp angle. Yeah, six bounces. It need just a little bit of extra da angle, and I would have had some more damage there. What a good win. Shows a support, Venezia. One where you just don't have the opportunity to farm the entire game. Uh, Des Moines should die to the GK, but maybe we get him. We do get him. There we go. Pretty good couple of games. Not huge damage, but I think it shows the utility of Venezia. Um, damage, it's easy to farm battleships, right? It's not, a, it's not something that's difficult. So maybe showing the utility side and holding a flank by ourselves after losing the DD is interesting to you guys. Um, I talked about that a little bit, but really it came down to trying to figure out where the DD would go to Torp and then be angled to that and waiting for those Torps. Because then you can pinpoint the location at least from where he Torped. And then you know general directions. And if you stay close enough to the cap, they can't enter the cap without... Um, and what, why am I collecting containers in a video? Um, they can't they can't get into the cap to cap because you're so close to it they would just get lit normally um, but that's venezia i think reload is better than range but you can see some of the value in range mod being able to help your teammates finish off targets that kind of thing and sap hurts at any range it's not like ap where the pen falls off at range it's like high explosive if it hits and it can pen that armor it's dealing damage and it deals very good damage i did mention the uh I did mention the armor. I should say that quickly, right? You have a 30, right? A 30 millimeter deck, 30 millimeter uh, upper belt. It's really good. You even have an icebreaker of a 40 millimeter, right? So you're auto bouncing a lot of AP. It's not a very big superstructure. It's pretty thin. And most importantly, it turns more like a DD, like a big DD than a cruiser, even though it's so huge. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. It's a little slow on the rudder shift, but once it starts turning, it turns very quickly. And it's hard to hit because of that. Um, so let me know what you think about Venezia. Maybe you don't like it as much as I do, but I think this ship is amazing. And definitely one worth grinding. So thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.